Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer and you are with Talk TV. Still with me is Philip Ingram, uh, former military intelligence officer. And uh, very soon we're going to be joined by both a Tory MP uh, and also a Labour uh, Together strategist as well. First of all, I want to give you some of my thoughts about what happened in the House of Commons last night. And indeed what happened outside it, because a lot of anger, isn't there, about the chaotic scenes, the outrageous scenes inside Parliament. But let's talk about the outrageous scenes outside Parliament, across the country, that influenced what our elected representatives chose to do yesterday. Because, yes, Sir Lindsay Hoyle was clearly pressured to allow that Labour amendment. And, yes, it does appear that the Labour Party and the Labour leadership did pressure him because, well, not just because they wanted to have a, a vote that didn't make uh, Labour rebels make the Keir Starmer look bad and look weak, but they also were in fear for their lives of some of their MPs. We see that across all of the benches. Why? because a highly political, highly violent ideology called Islamism is sweeping our nation. No, this is not Islamophobia. This is real. You know how this is real? Because we actually see the victims of that, not just in Mike Freer, the justice minister, who said he's not standing for parliament again because of the threats to him and his family from Islamist ideologists. Uh, we see it in Sir David Amos, an MP brutally murdered because of Islamic ideology. We see that in Stephen Timms, a Labour MP, thankfully for survived a stabbing in his own constituency. Yes, we all focus on Joe Cox, talk about her all the time. Another tragic death at the hands of a far-right extremist. But actually, the far-right extremist violence is by far the minority. Let's just go through just a list of the Islamic uh, extremist events we've seen in recent years. Um, let's go back to the London Bridge attacks, 2019 and 2017, the Reading attack in a park uh, in 2020, the Manchester Arena attack in 2017, also in 2017, the Westminster attack, the Woolwich murder of Lee Rigby back in 2013. Um, does anyone remember 7-7 in 2005 when we lost 52 people in those uh, horrific bomb attacks on buses and tubes? Does anyone remember the Batley Grammar School teacher who four years ago just showed an image on, from Charlie Hebdo of Prophet Muhammad to his class and has been in hiding, fearing for his life ever since? Uh, the staff of the cinemas uh, supposed to be screening the Lady of Heaven uh, about the Prophet Muhammad's uh, uh, family. Um, basically facing threats and therefore refusing uh, to go ahead with it. The little boy who took a Quran to school for a bet and it got scuffed and his mother forced to basically beg local leaders in the Muslim community for her child's life as a police officer looked on and approved. We have slept, walked into this. No one should be surprised by what happened in the House of Commons last night. We have been brushing this issue under the carpet for years. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya and everything will be okay. The one thing we must not do is face up to the threat that we have imported to our country. And no, this isn't Islamophobia. This isn't talking about the four million Muslims who live peaceably in this country who want to just make a life for themselves, for them, ch their children, go to work and live lives the same as everyone else of any other religion or none. We are talking, though, about a sizable minority, a far too large minority of extremists in our midst, pushed on often by the far left, yes, the far left, not the far right, to say basically that if they don't like something that happens in this country, what someone says or what someone does or an image they show, they have the right to shut that down with their threats. Last night, they shut down our democracy. And the Speaker of the House of Commons and the Labour leader and all the other MPs who went along, they allowed it to happen. But I don't criticise the MPs because they are living for fear of their lives. So many MPs have been threatened by many different uh, uh, people and many different causes. But so many MPs are living in fear of their lives and their families' lives and safety right now. We no longer have a proper functioning democracy. They have votes on ceasefires in Gaza because they are too afraid not to. That is not how democracy should work. And if we don't stand up and if we don't confront it and we don't talk about it openly and we don't deal with it now, it's only going to get worse. That's what I think. I wonder what you think. Do get in touch. You can give.